Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we have another Sew Along Sunday. So we are currently in between Sew Alongs. We just finished up our B6358, the Lisette swimsuit last week. And then next week we will be starting uh, B6674. I think that's right. I'll put up a picture of the pattern. Are you coming up here? Okay, come on. Oh, my business partner is joining me. It's hot, and so sometimes she wants to come sit next to me. She's always near me, um, but sometimes it's she doesn't want to sit next to me. She's hot and wants to just lay on the cool floor. But I guess I'm being deemed uh, worthy to sit next to right now. <laughs> okay, so in between my sew alongs, I do like to do a tutorial, which is um, going to be today. So I am currently wearing the Coco Wawa Crafts uh, raspberry dress, and uh, this was my sew the look, uh, the pattern I used for the sew the look. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I'll pop a video, a link up to that video here, um, a card that you can hit to go see that video. Um, I recreated an Everlane dress, and so I used uh, this pattern, and I did, obviously, some shearing across the bodice, the front and the back of the bodice, such as the pattern calls for. Now, I am not, I have not done a ton of shearing in my sewing career. I just, you know, a little bit. There was a, um, a dress I made, oh, towards the beginning of, like, my dressmaking um, sewing journey <laughs> that had shearing across the back and so I have done it before um, just not a lot so uh, Anna who is the um, owner or you know has Coco Wild Crafts has a tutorial on her YouTube channel for how to do shearing and I will link that down below she also links another channel um, or another video on um, adjusting bobbin tension for a front loading um, bobbin or even it would, the same thing would work on my industrial machine because it's not a drop-down bobbin. Um, mine's not front-loading. It actually comes from the side, but, you know, same thing. <laughs> anyway, so it's basically, one, whether or not your bobbin pops into the machine without a bobbin case or if your bobbin goes into a bobbin case and then goes into the machine. Um, I will pop links down to both those videos before. Now, I watched those videos, and I actually didn't have to do anything to my bobbin. Um... So I'm mentioning those videos in case you have troubleshooting, if you need some troubleshooting ideas, um, and in case you have issues. Now, with this technique, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing a test sample just to make sure you are um, getting the um, ruching, shearing effect that you want and that everything um, is, is correct. You want the tension to look really good on the back. It, it should just look like a line of um, elastic on the back, basically. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Um, I'm not an expert on this, but this is just what worked for me. Again, if you're having issues with your tension and that kind of thing, I will leave links to both those other videos down below for you to go have a look at those. But I didn't have to mess with my bobbin case at all. Now I'm gonna take you over to the machine and we're just gonna work on a scrap piece. Um, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do exactly what I did for this bodice. Now, a few tips. The closer your shearing lines are together, the more of the gathering effect that you can get. So on this pattern, they are spaced 5 eighths of an inch apart, but if you went like 3 eighths of an inch apart, you would get even more, um, uh, it would pull in even more, obviously, because you have more elastic. Now, 5 eighths of an inch makes this dress really comfortable. It's still fitted. Um, it's a fantastic summer dress because of that, and I think it's the perfect width for this top. But if you were doing, I don't know, a back panel of a, um, top because that is it's very in right now or if you're just going to do a couple lines of shearing for like to just to draw in a waist on a, on a top or like a sleeve it's just shearings everywhere or even at a cuff um, maybe you would want to do closer like a three-eighths of an inch apart so I'll talk to you about talk to you um, about the adjustments that I made to my machine very minimal so again if you are having issues go check out those videos down below um, but I wanted to show you, basically you are going to be using regular thread on top. I use Guterman Mara 100 thread for pretty much every project. Um, aside from some top stitching, or maybe if I'm working with leather, I'll use a heavier um, thread sometimes. Not always. It uh, just kind of depends on the project. But 90% of the time, I use Guterman Mara 100 thread, and I buy it from Wawak.com. And um, if you're in the U.S., I think they ship to Canada too, but it might be kind of pricey. Um, the U.S., if you spend over 100 it's free shipping. But shipping normally is just like, I don't know, 5 or $6. Um, anyway, their thread is very inexpensive compared to like what you could get at a um, like a Hobby Lobby Joann's that kind of thing um, and you get a lot more thread so anyway that's a side note but I also bought my elastic thread from Wawak this is Dritz and it is it looks like this I ordered um, the pattern 
for the raspberry called for six spools, so I bought six spools. There's 30 yards on this, uh, but I only, I didn't even use a one whole spool, so I have a lot of this left so I can do a lot more shearing, um, which my daughter I think is interested in having some sheared garments in her closet too, so it's a fun thing. It's a very fun thing. So I will leave links down to that below and also to my regular thread that I use down below. Um, but yeah, I will take you to the tutorial now and kind of show you um, what I do. It is not hard. Um, also, I have washed this dress once and not had any issues. Someone had mentioned that they had issues with their shearing coming out when it got washed and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I hope I don't have that issue. But I've been wearing this dress nonstop and I just stick it in a, it's cotton, it's a Liberty uh, cotton lawn. Um, I put it in a, a very large lingerie bag and stick it in the wash with everything else and then let it air dry and I have not had any issues. So um, I don't know, maybe if it was just in the, I have an agitating uh, top loading washing machine that's like, well, we had it since we've gotten married, so 17 years old. <laughs> and um, maybe that could definitely pull things out with the agitation, but in the lingerie bag, no issues. So that's just a side note as well. All right, I'll take you to the tutorial now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of content and want to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account, which is linked down below, which is just basically a one-off uh, tip jar, basically, um, for these kind of tutorials and the sew-alongs. All right, I hope you guys have a, a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you next time. Okay, so like I mentioned, this tutorial, I definitely followed both Anna's tutorial and I looked at the other tutorial that she, um, that Anna gave as well for the shearing. Um, I just didn't find all the steps necessary. <laughs> um, for instance, Anna was tying off her um, line of uh, elastic thread with the regular thread after every line that she did. Um, and then she said another hack was to go and then, you know, sew across your line, then go down and then, but to reduce your stitch length a lot and then make it big and go back. I didn't find that necessary either. I have washed my dress a couple of times and I think I mentioned I wash it in a lingerie bag, like a big, um, met, like a netted, so it can still get clean, but it doesn't get, um, torn apart by the agitator in my washing machine. And I just, I haven't had any issues with anything coming out. So this is what I did. Again, if you're having issues and want to troubleshoot, I have links to both of the videos that um, kind of show you troubleshooting with the shearing down below. Okay, so I have my fabric. We're going to pretend that this is the back panel or the bodice, the bodice or whatever. And I've marked my lines of shearing. They're five-eighths of, five of an inch apart. Um, and I've marked it with a friction pen because this will disappear when I hit it with steam. I have also marked in my seam allowances. Sorry, this one got wonky. I had to straighten it out. It was bothering me. <laughs> um, I marked in my seam allowances of five eighths of an inch. I just arbitrarily picked that. Um, just so you can easily see that I'm going past the seam allowances. Um, and that's so when I sew my side seams or whatever, your the seams here, that all of that um, elastic threading and everything is getting caught in that line of stitching as well. And I think that keeps everything nice and secure. So I have my piece of fabric that I'm going to be shearing with my lines marked on it. I have my um, elastic thread and I have a, um, get out a bobbin case here. I don't have a front loading bobbin. It's actually from the side, but it looks like like a home front loading bobbin. So mine has a bobbin case that I actually have to um, put my bobbin in. This is my industrial machine. Now my other machine is just a drop down, um, so I just take a little thing off and my bobbin just drops directly into the um, bobbin case as part of the um, machine. So again, Anna had said that she adjusts the tension on her bobbin case. Um, you can adjust it. There's little screws here that you can adjust the tension. Um, I have a fly in here. That's super annoying. Um, you can adjust the tension with the screw here on the side of the bobbin case. And likewise, if it's, if it's a, you know, a drop in bobbin, you can also, um, adjust that bobbin case. You have to completely take it out of the machine, um, which is a little bit of a hassle. But again, I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to adjust the tension on my bobbin at all. So we have the elastic thread and you can see, um, elastic thread in the bobbin, and then I just have my regular Guterman Mara 100 in the top, um, for the top thread. So you're going to wind this by hand. You can't use a, a bobbin winder on this just because it does, um, you don't want it to pull too much. Um, 
So I'm just gonna, you just start it, and what I do, so I've stuck it through the top there, is pinch that, and then, it's kind of tricky, but basically, I'm just going to wrap, 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 and I go kind of, and I mean, I'm not keeping it completely slack, like I'm pulling it somewhat taut, and then once it's gone, you know, a little bit just to keep things, I'll flip it, so that I can then make it even and you'll wind it like that all the way until I didn't do it all the way full um, just part way um, I'll, I mean I did it more than that but I already have one wound here so um, I'm not gonna wind this one again but that's what you do to wind it so I'm pulling it just a little bit I mean I don't want it I don't want it um, super loose in there but I also don't want to pull it too much so I know that's kind of hard to say, but just start wrapping. I mean, you get tension naturally when you're doing that, and your fingers do get in the way, so just be careful when you're wrapping that. So that's the way it works for um, for either bobbin. You'll need to wrap for either bobbin. So once you have your... <clears throat> bobbin all wound, which this one, this is a good... Um, that's about how full I want it. Is that gonna focus? There it goes, there it goes. That's about how full I want it, if you can kind of tell there. So I'm going to put it into my bobbin case, like so. And I'm gonna load this into the bottom part of my machine. Um, and I'm going to take you in front of the machine here in just a second and show you the, sh the settings for my machine. But again, I'm putting this into the bobbin, and it just goes into the bobbin just like it, any other bobbin thread would go in. Um, and then I've got regular thread in the top. So I'm going to move you, and um, we'll take a look at the machine and the settings, and then I'll show you how I do the shearing. Okay, so I have my bobbin. It's been loaded down here. I have regular thread on my machine. Sorry if that's kind of backlit. I'm going to do a little tour. It's going to be kind of bright. So as you can see, the white spool way up there <laughs> is my top thread. All right, now for settings for my machine, this is where I adjust my length on this machine. I, it, I normally keep it at like a 2.5 as my normal stitch length. So I'm going to take my stitch length to um, anywhere between a 4 and a four and a 5. Um, I think I did a 4.5 when I did my um, raspberry dress. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my stitch length to a 4.5 length. And I also want to remind you um, that my machine uh, that's not right. My machine does uh, cut the thread and it back stitches automatically. So we're going to talk about that here in a little bit too. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're basically just gonna follow so along and follow the, the lines. You wanna back stitch at the beginning and ending every time you start and stop your stitch. So I'm gonna start about halfway. I just wanna I just wanna start and stop in my seam allowance. I don't wanna start at the very edge of the fabric because that brings up the edge of the fabric really badly. Um, so I'm gonna start just kind of midway in between um, my seam allowance. And I'm just going to start, because I again, when I sew my seam here, I just want to get all of these lines caught. So I'm just going to start sewing. See how it's already gathering? I'm just following this. Oops. Hold on. It did something. Something caught. All right. Okay, as you can see on the back here, hopefully, this uh, did not catch at all. <laughs> which is not what you want. Okay, I also wanted to make note, when I was doing this with my um, raspberry dress, see when it cut the thread, how, cause it, it um, sucks back in. That's why that did that, hold on. It sucks it back in, so every time I start and stop a line of stitching, I'm gonna get a different bobbin case. I think that might've been the problem there. Every time you start and stop a line of stitching, um, I had to uh, get into my bobbin and, what is going on there? <laughs> and pull it back out. Oh, that's what the problem is. Also, a little tail for the thread is not letting my bobbin spin. Oops, sorry. 
too thick in there. See, we're doing some problem solving right here. <laughs> All right, so the little tail that goes with the, um, where I started it, good gracious, I just popped it down there again. Okay, I'm just gonna cut that real short, so it's not a problem. Um, okay, so we're gonna put this back into the bobbin. Oh my gosh, I have, there's flies all over my house for some reason. Okay, make sure that that pulls, it does. All right, so what I wanted to say before as well, sorry, I'm pulling out all of these stitches that I had made. Um, if you run out of bobbin thread, of your stretchy bobbin thread, in the middle of a line, stop and pull it back to one of the seam allowances because you want to start and stop in the seam allowances because um, you'll get that back stitching. That makes sure that everything gets secured in that seam line. Okay, sorry, the second one is my actual, see, isn't it? No, it's not. Okay, I'm about halfway, sorry, the first one's my seam allowance that I arbitrarily picked. All right, now once I'm to the end of this line, I am in the middle of the seam allowance, I'm gonna raise my presser foot, I'm going to sew down to the next line. And now I'm going to sew back. Now, obviously the more you do, the more that your fabric gathers. And so you just kinda wanna go slow and kinda stretch it out as you go. So now I'm to this end. So, and the more lines you do, the uh, more gathered it becomes. So we're just basically zigzagging back and forth. You just wanna stay on that line about halfway through. And you can already see how much that it is gathering up, which is obviously what you want. We're gonna look at the back of this here in just a second. Let me do, okay, so let's say that I got halfway through this line and I ran out of bobbin thread. I would stop and I would pull everything back to this middle of the seam allowance here, um, back stitch, you know, sew over it a couple of times, do a back stitch, and then start from there just so that elastic is caught. You know, one length of elastic is always caught in at least one of the um, side seams. Okay, I'm gonna go back here and then we're gonna stop. I'm attacked by a fly. Okay, so now from the back, you look how nice and straight that is. It almost looks like the thread um, the, the top thread is just kind of holding uh, that, that in line like perfectly. So if your back um, elastic is looking all like zigzaggy and wobbly, that's not right. You've got some tension issues. But again, my machine, just by increasing my um, stitch length to a 4.5, completely worked. And it's nice and stretchy. Um, and then, of course, since we started and stopped and did all of our zigzag, you know, um, coming down to the next line in that seam allowance. When I sew this seam, and you'll, you wanna kinda pull it, when I sew this seam on this seam allowance right here, I'm sewing over all of that elastic thread again. And I would do that at a 2.5. So that is keeping my elastic all nice and secured. So now I'm gonna take you over to the ironing board really quickly and show you um, what happens when you apply seam. All right, so here we have our piece. So when I hover, oh, fog up my lens. Sorry, give that a minute. <laughs> oh no, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to fog that up. Um, I mean, you can still see some of my friction 
um, marks. And actually this brown friction pen does leave a little bit of pinky behind, which actually um, when I washed my um, sheer dress, because I did use the brown pen, it washed out. But I wanted you to be able to see it really well in the white. So definitely test before you do any of that. You can use chalk and that kind of stuff too. But there you go. And this is pulled in um, to half, it will pull in to half its width. And it's like super stretchy. I have only one hand. Um, yeah. And that's how I did my shearing. It's very easy. Um, with my dress, I hemmed the top before I started the shearing. But, you know, other than having to hand wind the bobbins um, as I went, and I just would wind a new one when I would run out, um, and having to unpick, you know, back so that I made sure I started and stopped each new line in a seam allowance, that's the only thing that took a little bit of time. Other than that, it is a very satisfying and fun little technique. So definitely don't be scared of it. It's not hard. Um, again, the only thing I had to do to my machine was, um, other than using the uh, bobbin, elastic thread in the bobbin, was just to change my um, length to 4.5. So um, I used this uh, regular needle. I used my regular presser foot. Um, I didn't have to adjust the tension on my thread at all. Um, I was kind of thinking I would have to do that a little bit, and I didn't have to do any of that. So, um, yeah, don't... Uh, don't freak yourself out until you um, have a problem, basically, because <laughs> you might not. You may be like me and be able to very easily um, do this without any adjustments. All right, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer them. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.